So uh, now time for the main feature. Uh, of course, the standard, you know who I am. But hey, I have a really nice headshot, so I can't let it go to waste. So now is the point where we get to choose our own adventure. Uh, I have a couple different options I can present from, depending on what the crowd wants to hear about. Or we can also take a completely third path and try and figure out DNS on our own. But uh, someone else probably should take the, the lead on that one, because I've set DNS up before. But it's been years ago, and I know almost nothing about it. So uh, yeah. But yes, I, I had to leverage uh, our, our friendly uh, uh, AI uh, overlords to generate some graphics here. So uh, the two options that I do have within junk mail is this file open. Uh, I have uh, how to use a builder and play in that sort of space or how to abuse Alien to uh, install uh, packages that don't exist for your distribution. Uh, so like say you have a Red Hat package and you want to make it into a Debian package, it will magically try to make it work with heavy emphasis on the, it will kind of try. I'm curious, I had to Google both of these to know what they are. Is Builda like a Docker competitor-ish? So Builda is a uh, single <laughs> What's that? It has a weird spelling, Builda. Yeah, it's it made by people in like uh, uh, in the, the uh, east uh, of uh, the US. And they like, yeah. it doesn't say yeah, they, they, they like to park their car on it. And go to Harvard Yard, <laughs> but yeah, and I know that was a terrible Boston accent because <laughs> I'm not from Boston. So yeah. Anyway, though, uh, so yeah, th those are the two options. Uh, what, what do people want to play in? Uh, build a basically is uh, you can build OCI containers without having to write the full Docker file. You essentially you can do it command line style without the, the Docker uh, uh, daemon and all that stuff. <clears throat> and it allows you to be a little more programmatic about how you build it versus just having a script. It, it does have the compatibility that you can run it off of a Docker script and build, but it's sort of, uh, it goes hand in hand with uh, Podman where Podman can build containers, but uh, they, they're sort of both Red Hat-ish uh, uh, universe, but it, it does work elsewhere. You say if nobody else has any preference, I will build that. Okay. During that, we're gonna dive right in. And uh, again, apologies for uh, how, how uh, uh, very sketchy uh, all this is going to end up being. But so here we go. I love how Microsoft uh, Office actually uses live.com for all of their consumer grade stuff. Yay. Uh, so yeah, dive into Builda. Uh, basically, I mean, you guys are kind of familiar already with uh, containerization. Uh, I know everyone grits their teeth when uh, you pull, uh, sort of call it as a basically a de facto VM that you you can uh, basically just uh, deploy onto anywhere. And uh, yes, I know that the kernel is shared and stuff like that, but it basically is a universe in a bottle that can run your thing. And in theory, it will run on my laptop, it will run on the web server up in the cloud, and it will run on Don's machine. Uh, no matter where you run it, it fixes that. Well, it, it works here, sort of uh, problem. And uh, a uh, basically, refresher Docker was sort of the, the granddaddy that, yes, there were 
uh, remote or uh, VMs and other stuff like that that came before it. Docker doesn't do anything new, as I've talked about before, but they were really the first one to get it all right in one big package where you have the the OS install coming along, the, the package management, all stuff where you can deploy a container, the, the Docker repos, the networking, everything all in one spot. And uh, they were really the first ones to do it. However, they are no longer cool and in vogue because uh, uh, sort of the, as we were talking about before, of the, the places actually wanting to try and make a cash grab to make money. They have a rather onerous uh, uh, way of trying to inject themselves into uh, making you buy subscriptions from them, which I, I have no problems with them making money, but they've gotten progressively and progressively more obnoxious about it. And that I do have problems with because uh, I, I don't like the football being pulled out from under my foot as I go to kick it. And uh, yeah, so anyway, though, uh, there have been various other groups around that have come up with software solutions and uh, container repositories and stuff like that that aren't Docker related. And around that, there's this whole uh, initiative called the OCI or Open Container Initiative that uh, originally Docker contributed a bunch of stuff to. And it's basically the uh, Rosetta Stone of here's how containers should look like. And in theory, you can take a Docker container and run it on a uh, run C instance then running uh, uh, Renetis or on a uh, uh, Podman instance, and there it's all uh, compatible. Which brings us into talking a little bit about Builded. Again, uh, sort of in the, the idea that you have one tool and it does one thing very well, Builded is around building those uh, OCI containers rather than Docker where you have the full kitchen sink uh, all thrown together in one big thing and it's running its route. So uh, if there's vulnerabilities or anything like that, yeah, it's going to be bad. If you're in the Docker group, you're about to lose it all. Yep. And if you mount your slash uh, into the Docker container, uh, well, look, now you're root and you can do anything in there with any of the files. So yeah. Uh, Basically, again, containerization, you're uh, encapsulating your application code, all of the stuff around it, and the environment and variables all itself into a bottle. And uh, like I said, it can run everywhere. Uh, so why do you want to do this? Well, it's portable, it's scalable. I can have multiple versions of it running on multiple machines and a load balancer to throw you around. And if it falls under that, it's sort of uh, cattle, not pets, writ large, because it's this ephemeral, in, ephemeral uh, instance of it that spins up. You can have file storage backing it, but if this thing dies, I'm not going to cry about it. I just spin up another one, and you're good to go. And uh, it also sort of uh, enables you to build uh, your software very fast and easy. and uh, it's easier to set up your dev environment when your dev environment is completely portable and movable and has all of the instructions right there to rehydrate it. A uh, couple different ways that you can use it, of course, is uh, if you want to take an existing application, just bundle it in there and it makes it easy to forklift shift it up to the cloud. Um, it's loved in the microservices world because you can do scaling really easy by just brute force lobbing stuff out and it also makes it so much more clear. So the Docker folks we talked about, OCI we talked about, Kubernetes is sort of that, that taking the, the Docker idea of running on one machine and uh, uh, fanning it out across the entire cluster. And then Podman of course is the answer of, well, I, I don't want to be running Docker, but I want to be doing all the same things and more because it actually it has some really nice features to be able to integrate with SysD, to be able to spin up containers into uh, using Podman as, as services if you're running locally on one machine or scheduling or all those sort of things. 
as well as also being a local instance of a Kubernetes like world that you can run in. So it has a lot of attractive things. It also runs rootless by default, which is great as uh, long as you're not running uh, uh, SE Linux, because yeah, SE Linux really hates you if you go into trying to mount files and stuff like that. And yes, I know there are ways around it. We have a presentation on that, how to do that, but it, it just is obnoxious and annoying. And I hate security when it gets in the way. So yeah. Um, this backwards compatible. If you have some application that's written horribly in the main with the Dr. Damon, you can make it work with Automan. And it's gotten a lot better about that than it once was. But you can even do uh, Docker, uh, the, the Docker deploy service stuff, they, it's compatible enough that you, you can get a version of it to work. There, there be dragons a bit. It, it works, but uh, if you go really odd edge cases, they, there still are rough edges sometimes. Uh, but yeah, most of my heartburn that I've ever had with uh, Podman has been just permission level stuff and SE Linux. Uh, Issues where I've just been too lazy to turn it off. But uh, so, Builda, again, you, you sort of have some real nice uh, features. You can uh, create a working container from scratch, or you can use an image uh, as a starting point. And basically, uh, you can either do it programmatically via shell script or stuff like that, or just your traditional uh, Docker file, it's com backwards compatible. You can do all of the freaky multi-stage Docker file, file build stuff. It, it really is like-for-like uh, -like compatible if you really want to. And you can either do uh, the new version of uh, Docker containers, which is the OCI containers, or there's older versions of Docker with image format, and they can talk to both of them. And really, the cool thing is that you can mount a uh, container and use it as basically a root file system and make manipulations on it. So if you have a container that already exists, you can mount that and um, make modifications on it and then release that as a new uh, build all programmatically. And um, uh, really, the, the cool thing is it ends up uh, uh, you. you rather than having the multi-layers of uh, stuff where like say you have a file, you change it to one layer, then you RM it, but it still exists uh, if you're doing Docker. It's all just GIFs that get applied uh, as you move across it in layers. Build a, you know, you, you can actually make those changes and release a new uh, container without all of that stuff. So that, that's really where it's nice. And uh, yeah, there, there's a little bit more flexibility there. Uh, so yeah, we've sort of covered uh, the uh, purpose, what OCI is and all of those. And we've got uh, the, the big commands that you care about are build a from, which uh, you can either do build a from and a container or build it from scratch, and then just start uh, making your, your container with by like installing with you into it essentially. And then uh, commit is where you're you're pushing it up. We'll dive into actually doing that in an example here in a minute. And actually we're there right now. So let's go ahead and pop out of full screen, uh, jump over to uh, my uh, cheat sheet notes here, uh, and then pull up a terminal here. And so uh, the one issue that I had while I was trying to troubleshoot this was for whatever reason, I have my, uh, I, I have my uh, home directory completely hosed for trying to run Builda as just a non-rooted user. So if we go uh, and try and use it the way that it's uh, supposed to do, uh, and if we do, we go, uh, let's try build it from scratch, which is the, the first instruction here. Basically, we're saying, hey, I want just a completely blank image, nothing in it. Uh, it tells you that, yes, you, you went ahead and created one. It's in working container one. So let's figure out where that's at. 
And if we uh, copy this uh, mount new container, uh, we can go ahead and bring that into uh, a vari variable here. And the, the error that you'll see that I, I'm running into here is that uh, my uh, dot local slash share container storage VFS is not, the operation is not permitted to CH own it. So not sure what's happening there. The, the easy, quick solution to fix this is uh, uh, create a new user and or just totally remove it and start over. My, my uh, let, let's keep diving ahead, going boldly forward, uh, is to just go uh, switch user over to root. which is the antithesis of what you're supposed to do, but <laughs> hey, demos are going to demo. So if we, I type in my password correctly, uh, there we go. And so then let's uh, go ahead and do that build it from scratch again. Here we go. We have a working container one because I already have a working container that I was working through. But let's just go ahead and do that scratch mount. Show container, and we have working container dash one. And so then we go, go, I can type, P C H. We, we can see, oh, sorry. yep. There we go. So you can see that it's actually uh, created an overlay FS. Uh, mount essentially. And so we want to do some stuff in here to actually create it. Uh, you can actually run uh, commands inside of it. Uh, so the, the first thing that you can do is just run uh, Debbie uh, Deb Bootstrap uh, to install a uh, instance of Jammy Jellyfish in, into the container. And of course, it will take just a second to run. But we're basically uh, running it and basically installing a, a full OS into uh, Stretch Mount. And as you can see, it's going to run just for a couple minutes here. And since it's base, it's not very large. It won't take it very long to run here. At least I hope it won't take very long. Yeah, we'll see how that like it. Points would be not durable, hundred ish. Remember that. So anyway, though it, it does end up running, and uh, so you can do say similar things. Just thinking in my head. Oh, you should, I could do one while he's doing it. <laughs> yeah, just but, you know, that would be a cruel joke. Yeah, do just uh, start you start downloading uh in BitTorrenting just to tie up the Wi-Fi in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, so one of the things that you can do with this, uh, if you're uh, building an EXE that is very self-contained, uh, you can just chuck that thing through. So, like, say, if you're doing a uh, uh, Rust or uh, one of those where you you can actually essentially just have it execute that and have everything you need bundled in there as one executable. You don't even need the OS. You can make a stupid small uh, uh, container with just your executable in there and just execute it. I know uh, Will, one of the, the members that uh, occasionally uh, uh, remotes in from uh, Philadelphia uh, has done that a lot with his stuff. And I believe Go is one of the ones that really works well with that. And uh, so with that, you have a very purpose-built, very small, very tight container that has only the vulnerabilities that you bring with it into there. Uh, so as uh, long as you can trust Go to not have vulnerabilities, which we uh, really all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that way you have a far smaller uh, blast radius than here where I'm actually installing a version, a base 
version of Ubuntu, which is pretty small in, in itself. So there, but it, it is not zero. So as you can see, now we're at the mercy of my uh, uh, potato for a disk here uh, as it unpacks. I can make that a little bit bigger because I can see uh, Rich there squinting in the back. You can also wear my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Want to make it easy for you? Maybe control shift plus. There we go. So yeah. Anyway, though, of course, the question of why do you need uh, Python three ten in your base image? Uh, maybe we should have built uh, a smaller container than Ubuntu, but <laughs> you, you get the idea. And also let that be a lesson of why you don't want to uh, actually uh, do uh, Ubuntu base as your, your container if you don't need Python and all that stuff. So anyway, though, we built this container. We, we can now uh, unmount it because we don't need uh, to write to it anymore because we just wanted to make a base container. So we can run that command to uh, Unmount new container, and that's just unmounting that that uh, uh, and they have a glitch in the, these instructions. We want uh, unmount. Okay, so rather than a uh, new container, we want to do, uh, can you tap complete? Uh, we want working container one. So rather than mount, we want to go mount and then just There we go. And just like in Docker, you end up with a hash. And uh, we can just go ahead and uh, say, OK, uh, let's go ahead and uh, run, uh, which it can run the OCI containers, even though that's really not its uh, purpose. You'd be better off using uh, Pathman to, to run it. Or, uh, yeah. Oh, Podman? Yeah, Podman. Yeah, sorry. I was going to say, I know whatever I just said was not what I <laughs> It's going to be one of those days. Uh, but uh, yeah, so run working container one. And let's just go ahead and say etc os dash. Release will tell us who it is. And oh, that's an interesting error. Did not do container. Oh, you didn't cap. The instructions say cap. Oh, yes, because we, so yes, that, that would be a good, thank you for catching that. So we yeah, tried one, OS yeah, we tried to execute a file that doesn't exist. So of course that, that aired out with status one. It works as expected. So yeah, it's a uh, jammy jelly, jellyfish. And uh, you can see it's your, your standard container. And so we want to name this something. Uh, you go build a commit. And uh, you can basically name it whatever you want. In theory, this is where you put your URL if you're going to push it up to uh, a container repository. Uh, but since we're not going to, we can just call it logic links. And there you can see it built the the blob and it's a single layer image rather than having to download 
5 million different uh, stuff. So uh, that's a great thing here. And then uh, of course you can list what are my existing images with And there you can see lug is the one that we have, and it's a whopping 386 meg because Ubuntu's done in Ubuntu. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, and then you can also do stuff like run Podman to run it. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at. Uh, Would help if I could type. So here we have uh, basically you can specify a whole bunch of different stuff like foot level of logging, um, where your uh, container registry's uh, comp file is, uh, all those sort of things, where you want to write root, uh, all sorts of various variables here. You can actually change what your uh, user ID uh, namespace map is because part of how uh, rootless Docker and rootless, all of the rootless spaces work is with uh, sub IDs. So that uh, root uh, container that or that uh, inside the container you're, you think you're running as root, well, no, it's just a sub ID that walked off from your, your own home user account ID. So the, that's one of the things that's required to make it work, uh, which is one of the things that breaks my heart at a large employer that I may know of, uh, where they they don't allow you to uh, use that because of the way that they have user accounts set up. So and that stops you from from working, which yeah, anyway. Uh, so you have all sorts of knobs and containers here, and their documentation is really fairly well. They have all of the different commands that you can feed it. So if we wanted to get, uh, uh, inspect the, the configuration of a container, uh, log in, log out, the same way that you do with Docker, uh, you can actually edit the manifest itself, pull push, all of the different things that you'd expect from uh, a Docker compatible uh, world as well as a few extra uh, things. So if we want to actually look at the uh, manifest, uh, let's go ahead and uh, take our look here and say manifest. And this would be where we can say inspect. So it, it helps you out if you uh, didn't give it enough information, just like you'd expect it to. So we can say inspect. And Or, or because we don't have Docker running. Uh, yeah. Anyway, this would be interacting with the actual Docker uh, uh, instance itself. If you had Docker running, you you could do stuff like put your uh, uh, image that you created into Docker itself. Is what it's looking like you can do. Uh, but yeah. So anyway, though. Anything else we want to try and do here? Uh, looking at our uh, time here, we're hitting about eight o'clock, which was about the amount of time I thought I'd be uh, demoing this. I think I do have a few more slides to, to follow up here. Yeah, uh, where I, I talk about a few more things. So yeah, uh, oh no, let's start beginning Okay, so uh, again, the, the comparisons build is a lot lighter weight, single purpose, and it uh, doesn't have all of that heavy weight of having the daemon that runs its root and all those terrifying things. Uh, it is not Docker, so I mean, there's always that issue that you're going to run into a edge case where bad things happen. They've gotten a lot better than they once were. 
and it's a lot easier to use and there's a lot more documentation out there, but it is the road less traveled. And uh, yeah, there, there, there sometimes be dragons, but yeah, future wise, I think we'll see it being used a lot more often just because uh, of the fact that you can do CICD with it a lot more easier than doing Docker and Docker and having to have Docker running on your build server and all, all that. And they, um, you just basically can uh, spin up a mount and do stuff on your own without having to worry about all that stuff. But uh, that, that's just a guess of mine. I, I don't see the long term for Docker surviving as a company just because they keep getting more and more desperate from what I can tell. And uh, they just keep getting more and more annoying. So I, I don't see them lasting. But then again, uh, uh, the the fun folks who make uh, uh, Java are still around, so I, I don't know. You so is MySpace. <laughs> yeah. In other yeah. news, MySpace is still around. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, though, it, I I can be wrong. I most often am, but uh, I I wouldn't be buying Docker stock if I were you right now. Questions, comments, snide remarks, things that I screwed up. Seeing that, we'll hit.